Christian, and when we consider hemodynamic significant PDA, we are thinking about the two parameters. Does this PDA is making harm in the form of pulmonary over circulation? At the same time, this PDA is making a problem in the form of systemic hypoperfusion. So we are dealing with the two things, one actual PDA, and does that PDA is making the complications in the form of the pulmonary circulation and in the form of the pulmonary hyperplasia. I would like to tell you this audience gathering about the complications morbidity related to the hemodynamic significant PDA. We all know issues related to the babies who are the PMW or extremely low birth weight baby with a severe IH, with a severe pulmonary hemorrhage associated with the NEC and most of them associated with the mortality. So, the main question comes in the mind naturally, what is the meaning of this hemodynamic significant PDA? The people who feel that this could be significant, the other group of people feel that this could be not significant. There is a quite big uncertainty about this significance. But definitely, we have a two parameters at present moment in our hand. One is a clinical parameter, which is worldwide, we know. But the second parameter, which has been we are targeting for last 10-15 years, is about the functional echocardiography to diagnose early targeted preterm PDAs. So let's see about these two parameters. What is the advantage of the functional targeted echocardiography is you are going to actually diagnose the PDA which is two days earlier than your clinical presentation. So when we say that the clinical presentation, you might not be able to pick up during your rounds, but definitely those who are doing the functional echocardiography, we can be able to say that we can at least pick up from 12 hours to 48 hours earlier than the routine things. No need to say about the parameters about the clinical PDA or the clinical presentations of the PDA, what we learned in our medical school in the form of the clinical examination as persistent hypotension associated with the cardiac failure or hemorrhage, but associated mainly the murmur or right pulse pressure. But to appear these PDAs, to appear this given PDA, as you know, most of the time it is after 48 to 72 hours. So to have that effect, we have to have associated parameters, and that's the reason we have things which are more important to diagnose this PDA, mainly the babies who are less than 30, 30 weeker. Definitely for the babies who are less than 20 weeker, we say that we need to concentrate on neonatal functional echocardiography. What we are going to target with the neonatal functional echocardiography as definitely we are going to actually visualize the PDA. We are going to measure the size of the PDA and we will label whether this PDA is associated with the pulmonary pore circulation or associated with the systemic hypoperfusion. So these three criteria we are going to work out in the form of the associated functional echocardiography. Very easy. A short axis view, a parasitic short axis view, which is ductal view, you can able to visualize. So you can see, it's very easy to see the three leg view in the parasitic and short axis view as a gray scale. But the most important, those who are the initial part, once you put a color doppler, immediately you can see the duct, which is the one left to right, has a bright color, and you can able to diagnose those PDAs immediately by the color doppler mechanisms. No need to say, when you see such type of PDA, you can say, oh, this is a small duct. Even though we measure, we can level this baby as it's a closing one. But definitely here, somebody which sees that the baby is having a large duct, there is less than 30 meters, we need to proceed with other things. No need to say that when you see this type of a large duct, when you see this type of a large duct, you definitely freeze the image, you definitely measure, and no need to say that again, the babies with a duct diameter more than 1.5 millimeter, with associated problems in the form of an over circulation or hyperperfusion, we label them as the babies with a hemodynamic significant PDA. So that is the first important thing is that See the duct, color of the duct, measure the size of the duct, more than 1.5 mm, baby more than 6 to 12 hours, baby less than 30 weeker, definitely think in your mind, does this baby has hemodynamic significant duct? That is the first criteria we consider. We know that from the various studies, basically Professor Martin Klaffer from 
Sydney has shown that the ducts which are more than 1.5 mm have a further high mortality and high morbidity if we don't treat them within 48 to 72 hours in a baby who are less than 30 weeks. We want to see the direction and pattern of the duct. Definitely we need to put a pulse doppler on the pulmonary end of the duct. Once we put a pulmonary end of the duct, the doppler, we will see the left to right shunt which is the hemodynamic significant duct. Definitely these are the duct which are the pulsatile duct. These are the duct which requires active treatment. So these are the ones what we saw that. We saw the size of the duct. We saw the ductal pattern of the duct. Size more than 1.5. Ductal pattern left to right. That is the one parameter we always consider. We need to see the parameters in the form of the pulmonary hypoperfusion pressure and those parameters naturally the blood flow to the pulmonary is more, the blood flow to the left side heart is more and that's why you could able to you could able to see the LAO ratio in these babies and left side dilated heart with LAO ratio more than 1.4 millimeters, 1.4 is 1, that is a significant LAO ratio in these babies. Associated LVDD ratio with AO more than 2 is significant and these babies will end up with a high left side cardiac output, left side cardiac output more than 400 ml per kg per minute. This is a, a marker of hemodynamic significant duct. So we saw the duct, we saw the markers of the left side dilatation. At the same time, we need to see the markers of the systemic hyperperfusion. That means the blur which is supposed to go to the baby, which is not going to the baby. Now, which is going back to the pulmonary circulation. So, we will end up with a condition called as a ductal steam. When we put a Doppler in the most of the major arteries, like a descending aorta, renal artery, supermesentric artery, or anterior artery, we see absent or reverse end diastolic flow. This is this is the normal flow. This is the normal flow in the descending aorta, what we see in the normal routine babies. But if you see this flow, this is a good example about reverse end diastolic flow. This is the example of the reverse end diastolic flow with a baby with hemodynamic significant PDA. We are not going to wait this PDAs. We have to close this PDAs. We can't say that this is not hemodynamic significant. If you see this baby with a normal flow, while this baby with an absent flow in the end diastolic into the anterior artery. So, what we learned in the last 10 minutes is ductal size more than 1.5 mm, evaluation of the pulmonary hypoperfusion in the form of left side dilatation, evaluation in the form of systemic hyperperfusion as the absence of the reverse flow, these three markers definitely tells you that this drug needs help. This is available all the time. This is available all the time. These all parameters we need to work out mainly after 40 to 72 hours. So, the marker of the size, marker of the pulmonary over circulation and marker of the system pattern perfusion. These are the three important things which are available to us. Now, the major million dollar question comes is when to treat and naturally, should we treat? There are various approaches. We know that those people who actually in the Western cultures have initially started with the prophylactic therapies, those babies who are less than 30 weeks there is an approach called symptomatic approach, baby is clearly symptomatic, you treat, baby has murmur or body pulses, whatever, you treat. So these two approaches are pretty what we know, but we are concentrating on this approach which is called as early targeted asymptomatic approach. When a baby who are less than 30 weeks, can we pick up them before they become symptomatic? That is the one. And there are group of conservative approaches and at the same time, the surgical closure is always available. So these are the few approaches what currently we have. What we know from the various meta-analysis or various analysis that the prophylactic approach has definitely less average and definitely less ligation. No need to say that. But at the same time, if you see the early symptomatic or early targeted approach has definitely closure, less IH and definitely has less pulmonary hemorrhage which is the most important. But we need to consider about the long term things. Long term things definitely once the people have analyzed these studies in those babies who are less than 20 weeks, definitely has less mortality. So this is this is a, a beautiful paper published in archives that presence of PDA on day 3 of life associated with a, a severe morbidity at 20 weeks position. Input bonds prior to 20 weeks, period diameter more than 1.5 mm from day 3 is associated with a greater odds of IVH, DPD and morbidity.
So definitely, these are the babies we need to concentrate, pick up them early and go ahead from those perfect two. There are various trials, as you all know, the detect trial, which was near the shop because you know that this was not available in Australia. But that also shows that those recruited 94 babies, they are seeing that early diet approach is better one. The current trial, when the Oscar trial is currently going on in UK, uh, that will be the better answer from our point. The Tropical trial also recruiting the babies. So these are the two trials currently they are recruiting the babies when early asymptomatic treatment, that means they are doing the functional topography after six hours before the baby becomes clinically symptomatic. That is the answer they want to know. Naturally, the other side of the people, they will say that not to treat. The one side will say that treat and not to treat because there is a high rate of the spontaneous closure of the PVA. So why to treat those PVAs? There are around 30, 30, 24 to 43 percent of babies, those who are less than 30 weeks, they got spontaneous closure. So why to treat those babies unnecessary? That is the other side of the people. A lot of people have accepted the girl hypothesis. They have tried to do in the form of meta-analysis and this is that there is nothing improvement in the mobility and modality. So do we treat it unnecessary? Big question mark comes out that one. But naturally, the people like us, when we view that early symptomatic treatment is the one, we are currently saying that decreases the pain, decreases the pulmonary hemorrhage, decreases the IVH, and definitely decreases the uh, mobility in the future. The next question, which will be in the next five minutes, is now with what? If we diagnose this early symptomatic PDA, if we diagnose that the baby size is more than 1.5 mm, baby also has left side dilatation with left LA ratio more than 1.4 or tidal mortality is more, associated with absent or reverse flow with what we should treat. The old approach, we all did consider the approach. The medical treatment has revolutionized in the last 10 years. The treatment part has been the that has been initially surrounded with endometriosis, and the last five years it has changed to the And we all know that various things are coming up. The new modalities that people are trying, along with always their specialization is there. So I would say that if you go back to the slide, endometriosis probably most of the units, most of the centers now they are not using. The treatment has shifted towards the anti if you see the recent program, that they have included almost 2,000 babies and the efficacy is, is very good. Those are with intravenous or oral and definitely there is a less incidence of renal problems, less incidence of ADC and less incidence of GRP. So now the therapy has totally shifted from intermediation to the ibuprofen. So if it is ibuprofen, we need to find out intravenous or oral. So the people have tried the brufen with the various dose regimes. One dose regime people have applied 10 5, 5 with the 20 10 10. Naturally, the rates were slightly higher, closure rates were with higher with the higher doses regime, but definitely you can try with the simple regime of 10 5 5. We can continue with that one. You could compare oral versus IV ibuprofen, and that, that's the problem. Also, says that the actually the oral ibuprofen is a more efficacious than the IV ibuprofen. Oral ibuprofen is 15,000 times cost effective than the intravenous ibuprofen and there are no difference of adverse effect between oral and IV ibuprofen. And if you see the dosing pattern and if you see the pharmacokinetics of IV ibuprofen as compared to oral ibuprofen, the pharmacokinetics of oral ibuprofen is better than the intravenous ibuprofen. And that's the problem that's a problem came last year about ibuprofen for PDA as the one. And you can see clear cut that ibuprofen is effective as endometriosis. Ibuprofen reduces the risk of ADC and the oral ibuprofen is a more effective or as effective as IV administration. So that's why we say now currently the oral one, which is the one which we can consider. What about the newer treatments? The newer treatments now last four years. People have tried the duct closure with the paracetamol. This was the first report published in the pediatrics in 2011 as a surprise report as the baby's duct was not closed with endometriosis or brufen and they tried these five babies with the paracetamol and that time they tried with the, the enteral paracetamol, 50 mg per kg at 6 hourly and they found that the closure rate was good. They found that there was no toxicity 
And after that, essentially the mechanism, as you know, the paracetamol has a peroxidase mechanism as a, a poster vitamin synthesis inhibition. And the various trials that came out in the last four years about oral paracetamol versus oral ibuprofen, a good results, um, 81% versus 79%. The enteral paracetamol, our own uh, Professor Kavra has published this one, enteral paracetamol versus IV intermediacin, and with the paracetamol, 100% closure. So, definitely, what we think that this mechanism or this drug could have a future in the pipeline with the less side effects. But at present moment, we can say that we are still in the era of evidence medicine with the proof of oral ibuprofen. So with this background, I would like to say that definitely the PDA is not benign. It increases definitely the morbidity and mortality. We need to find out the problems associated with the PDA in the form of natural, just we discussed, as the pulmonary overcirculation problems. We need to find about the problems associated with the systemic hyperperfusion and definitely the functional echocardiography is the future to find out hemodynamic significant PDA in the form of size which is more than 1.5 mm, LAO ratio more than 1.4, with LVDD ratio more than 2 or associated absent or reverse endosteric flow into the major arteries like the descending aorta, renal artery, supermesenteric artery or anterior artery. Definitely this is where we are thinking as an early targeted treatment and that is what we are currently expecting from that one. The treatment planning point, current evidence we discussed that oral ibuprofen is the choice. Oral ibuprofen as 1055 is the current guidelines we are considering. In future, we are thinking about new medications as a paracetamol. Thank you.